The 4.7 update for Genshin seems to focus on the Dane Slip quest for the Fontaine chapter, but this time we got a lot of background information through the animated short, The Road Not Taken. This animated short manages to help confirm some things regarding the timeline regarding Aether and the Mean's journey. This video will be more focused on the buildup for Aether and the Mean's journey, explain the possible timeline for those two, and in the end, predict the future of Aether, Lumine, and even Dainsluff. While the timeline is not 100% clear, this is the most accurate interpretation I can make with the current information we have. Also, while Aether and Lumine are both confirmed canon as the Traveler, with the other being the Abyss sibling, for the sake of this video, Aether will be the Traveler with Lumine being the Abyss sibling. Before the beginning of the game, the introduction segment with the Unknown God, Aether and Lumine arrive from Teva, specifically in Conria. While it is unclear how long it took between their arrival and their attempted departure, it was clear they had spent time in Teva together, although the last moments before the Unknown God confrontation are very different. There is proof with Aether's braid and Lumine's intifad happening during that time span, although it seems the Traveler, both Aether and Lumine, has missing memory fragments regarding this. In addition, both Aether and Lumine have memories of Conria and some memories of the Cataclysm. The notable difference is that Lumine is the only one to have witnessed the fall of Conria while Aether was told this fact. Afterwards, they attempted to leave, but were caught by the Unknown God, and from there, the journey began. After being caught by the Unknown God, Lumine woke up in the world of Teyvat, and looking for her brother, she headed to a nearby city, Mondstadt. There, she would meet with her travel companion, Dainsluff, a royal guard for Conrad and one of the cursed survivors of the Cataclysm. From there, Lumine and Dainsluff would go on their journey to explore Teyvat, Dainsluff's motivation at the time being a mystery, but Lumine's motivation being the location of her brother Aether. During their journey, they stopped by Sumeru, and there, Lumine met a man named Clothar Albert who is also a cursed Conrian like Dayslip and his apparent child, Kari Bear, who appears as a Hilichro. While helping him cure his son, she meets an entity known as the Sinner, and likely sees the power of the Abyss for the first time. It was here when Clothar would become the founder of the Abyss Order, and the idea that would be the Luma Fate operation was created. Sometime after for unknown reasons, Lumine and Dayslip split, and Lumine would lead the newly created Abyss Order as the Abyss Princess, while Dayslip became the enemy of the Abyss Order. After being caught by the Unknown God, Aether woke up in the world of Tevat, and he would be camping alone looking for his sister Lumine. Sometime after he woke up, he met Palmon while fishing, and two months later, they started the journey together. Aether's goal is finding her sister Lumine, and Paimon's goal being just helping Aether. Their objective, as they were traveling to Tevat, was visiting each nation in hope of meeting their Archon to get more information regarding Lumine's whereabouts. During their journey, they would confront a mysterious organization known as the Abyss Order, and later a Shlesnayan organization known as the Fatui. Sometime after helping out Liyue, they would head back to Mosnet and meet a mysterious man named Dainsleth, who was hunting down the members of the Abyss Order. While accompanying him, Aether and Palmon eventually met Lumine, who turns out to be leading the Abyss Order. In addition, he will learn about the apparent goal of the Abyss Order being the Loom of Fate, and the identity of Dainsleth, a royal guard of Conria, who was cursed by a curse of immortality. After this, Aether and Palmon would continue the journey, helping nations, meeting their Archon, occasionally meeting Dainsla, and slowly learning more about Lumi's goal and the world of Tevat. Now, for what could happen in the upcoming Archon quest, I find it to be very likely that this is where Aether could see Dainsla to be more antagonistic than the last time we saw him. This may seem out of nowhere, but Genshin actually has been building up to this, even if it may not seem obvious at first. The first thing to look at is actually the Genshin Travail trailer, where we see the summary for each nation's story, with the last summary vaguely hinting at a possible Dainsliff confrontation. The next thing to find out is how exactly the upcoming quest can start the build up to said Dainsliff confrontation. The upcoming Arca quest name is Bedtime Story, and from what we saw in the trailer, it seems to take place in Sumeru again. There are two specific scenes in the trailer that are notable, that being the confrontation between Lumine and Dainsla in the place that resembles the same ruins in the Kari Bear quest, and the meeting between Aether and Lumine in the place that resembles the Eternal Oasis. I personally believe that the confrontation between Dainsla and Lumine 
is actually another flashback, since the ruins we saw in the Kari Bear Quest only existed in a past memory. And with the case of the mini between Aether and Lumine, it is most likely at the very end of the quest, and this is where I think Aether could not exactly turn to the Abyss or the side, but gain a brand new perspective. Said perspective includes being against Ainsleth, and possibly seeing the threat that is Celestia and the Heavenly Principles. The first time the foreshadowing regarding the perspective change during this specific quest is from the Will Not Taken, as that animated short shows a possible reason for Aether to see Thainsleth as an antagonist. And it is simply the fact that he blames him for what happened to me. In that animated short, we saw Thainsleth constantly distance himself from Lumine, and this was shown way before this short, specifically in the Kari Bear quest. It is likely that Lumine will begin to persuade Aether by giving her side of the story, that perspective being an end look into her journey. Case in point, the quest name is Bedtime Story. Another sign of foreshadowing is the same concept that I believe is still relevant, and that is the use of Syzygy. Syzygy, in simple terms, is the relation of two things. In Genshin, it's no stretch to the concept. From Division and Dilution to the siblings Aether and Lamine, the concept of Syzygy is commonly used in the Genshin narrative, and this concept is also used for the organization of elements. Long story short, since the beginning, the Genshin loading screen that showed us the elements in a specific order was a place of focus, as this order would be used again, notably in a monster compendium and even some items as well. By specifically using the slimes, notable pairs in the elements were shown, set pairs being Pyro and Hydro, Electro and Dendro, GU and Cryo, and Animo being by itself for now. This theory was the basis for figuring out which chess piece is which Gnosis. And while I stand by this theory, I also believe that we can use this concept to figure out how the story will go for each nation. For instance, Electro and Dendro are paired, so in the case of the nations, Inazuma and Sumeru's story should be linked, and they actually are thanks to Scaramouche. But another commonality between the chapters is actually the main theme in their Dance of Quests. Both quests constantly make us question the Abyss Order and have a sympathize with Dainsla. There appears to be no obvious sign of Dainsla being a possible antagonist, let alone a possible boss fight. Fontaine's chapter is the start of a new arc, and we see a MUCH different story compared to Inazuma and Sumeru. Long story short, the Fatui are not the main antagonist, unlike Inazuma and Sumeru's story, and instead, we face a much bigger threat. So, the upcoming Dance of Quest will most likely have Aether finally question Dance about his motives, the truth of his journey with Lamine, and a grander picture of this whole conflict. Even the trailer hints at this, as there are lines such as, You use it yourself, didn't you? That's why you have a human appearance. And, That way, Captain Dainsleth could accomplish his own goal. That throws skepticism at Dainsleth as a character. Now, it's possible that Nautilus chapter is where Dance of shows up as a true adversary while Fontaine's chapter only hints at it, marking it as a turning point for the Genshin narrative. In addition, we won't get everything we need to know as it's clear that Nautilus is the nation where we will get the most answers regarding of it being Archon related or Dance of related. As for what exactly Lumine will say or if she will actually give you notable information, time can only tell. If you enjoyed, leave a like and subscribe and give your own thoughts about what happened in the upcoming Archon Quest. Ace of Conditioner signing out. Take care guys.